Alright, I think it's time to come out of hiding and make another iceberg video. Cause that's what I'm known for now apparently. Though I am grateful for all the support, so thank you all. Persona is a spin-off of the Shin Megami Tensei series, and some of you may not have known that, which scares me. Regardless though, I think it deserves an iceberg of its own. Once again, I compiled multiple different icebergs and threw in some mysteries of my own to make the ultimate iceberg. I'll give a brief summary of how an iceberg image works again in case you don't know. The tip of the iceberg generally has well-known mysteries and theories. The lower you go, the more mysterious and obscure things get. One last thing, if you aren't subscribed, do me a favor and do so. Literally only 0.4% of you are subscribed. You know how sad that is? That's quite literally the lowest percentage I've ever seen. So do your boy a favor and subscribe, okay? Or don't, I can't tell you what to do. Alright, enough rambling, it's time to dive right into the Persona Iceberg. Persona 5 on Switch is something fans have been asking for for quite a while now. And they do tend to get a bit rambunctious on Twitter, but what do you expect? It's Twitter. Some fans speculate that they'll eventually get one, but honestly, there's no telling what could happen. Persona 5's scramble localization was something speculated by many fans, and they were worried they wouldn't even receive the game at all. Though luckily, Atlas did say they would localize it, and it should be coming out February of this year. Persona 3 HD is something fans also want, and may or may not receive. There's no way of telling if Atlas would actually make one, but, you know, it'd be welcome. I'd, I'd like it. The Persona protagonist always had some pretty inconsistent names. Just to name a few, there's Minato Arisato, Makoto Yuki, Sakuya Shiyomi, Minako Arisato, Amuka Arisato, Miyuki Akemi, Koton Shiyomi, Suja Seta, Yu Narukami, Akira Kurusu, and Ranamamiya. But, it doesn't just end there, no, no. There's also Tatsuyasuo, Maya Amano, those are the only two consistent ones for the most part. But Persona 1 is the worst offender. The protagonist's name in Persona 1 is Boy with an Earring, though his name in the manga adaptation is Naoya Tudo. So yeah, the Persona protags have some pretty inconsistent names. I guess the only one that's consistent is I guess she even counts anyway. People think that Persona Q2 will receive another sequel in the form of Persona Q3. Who would have thought? Here's the real kicker though. People think that Persona 1 and Persona 2 characters will make their appearance in Persona Q3. Honestly, I think this is highly possible. Atlas did say that we're working on something for 2021, and I don't really see them releasing Persona 6 anytime soon, so who knows? Fans were upset to know that Persona Q2 would not receive a dub. Many people, myself included, love the Persona voice actors in the English dub and we're strongly attached to them. So it's just kind of weird hearing their Japanese voices. There's nothing wrong with them. It's just once you're attached to a voice, it's kind of hard hearing a different voice come from them. I doubt we'll ever get a Persona Q2 dub, but you know, it is what it is. Delicious Pancakes refers to a line spoken by Goro Akechi that ends up getting him caught in the end. Let me just play the infamous clip. So you're going to go have cake now? I missed lunch today, so I'm quite hungry myself. <laughs> huh? Cake? What are you talking about? Oh, am I mistaken? I thought I heard something about delicious pancakes. No matter. Well, see you tomorrow. The absurdity of pancakes being the thing that gets Goro caught is what kind of made this a meme in the first place. During flu season, it's possible to kill the reaper pretty easily, as shadows are inflicted with despair. Despair eventually just ends up killing the opponent, and yeah, uh, you're done. Uh, he's dead, he's gone, you don't gotta deal with him anymore. Throughout the story of Persona 4 Ultimax, Lapras is referred to as a toaster by Sho, and for whatever reason, people liked that so much that they also started calling Igus a toaster. Eventually, someone made a 3D model of a toaster with Igus' head from Persona Q on it, and well, that's where you got this infamous picture from. I'll go ahead and get this one out of the way as well, as it goes hand in hand with Igus Toaster. Burn My Bread is a mondegreen of the Persona 3 intro, Burn My Dread. A mondegreen is basically a mishearing of a phrase, so... With Igus being called a toaster, and Burn My Bread being a thing, it was basically meant to be. Though something quite recently did happen with Burn My Bread. Basically, the entire library of Persona music has been released on Spotify, and with that came Burn My Dread. But miraculously, they mistitled it as Burn My Bread. I'm pretty sure it was done on purpose, but hey, what do I know? 
Persona 5 Arena is a game rumored to be in development as we speak. Persona 4 Arena featured older Persona 3 characters along with the Persona 4 cast. People are anticipating something similar with the Persona 4 cast being much older along with the Persona 5 cast being in the game. And hopefully the Persona 3 cast will be featured as well, but we'll just have to wait and see. Just who are Joker's parents and why don't they try to reach out to him throughout the game? It's pretty strange. You would think since he's on probation and all, they would try to check up on him every once in a while, but... I guess they just don't bother to. Do they just trust Sojiro that much, or is it something much sinister? Perhaps his parents are just neglectful, or maybe he had to do something with probation. There's a theory of who the parents are, but we'll get into that later. Apparently a customer from LeBlanc knows Joker's parents and asked Sojiro to take care of them. It had to have been a regular though, because I don't see some random customer going up to Sojiro and saying, Hey, do you want to take care of a delinquent? Especially since Sojiro doesn't actually know that he's innocent at all. It would have been really cool to see that customer check up on Joker every now and then. Unlike his parents. If you don't know, Persona 3 and Persona 3 FES do not allow you to control your party members. It's pretty strange. You'd think something like this would already be in the game, but surprisingly not. I tried digging around to see what the reasoning for this decision was, but I couldn't find anything. Though they do let you control your party members in Persona 3 Portable, and there are mods to allow you to control them, so if it bugs you that much, yeah, you could fix it. Persona and the entire Shin Megami Tensei series do a lot of crossovers. Just to name a few, there's Sword Art Online, Another Aiden, Identity 5, Bang Dream Girls Band Party, Dragalia Lost, Star Ocean, Grand Blue Fantasy, Catherine Fullbody, Sonic Forces, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Puzzle and Dragons, Darts Live, Tokyo Mirage Sessions, Hello Kitty, AFK Arena, Fantasy Star Online 2, Blast Blue Cross Tag Battle, do I really gotta go on? You'll never see it coming as a line from the Persona 5 battle theme last surprise, and this was meme to all hell. You'll never see it coming. Really, all you gotta do is look up You'll Never See It Coming compilation, and you'll see what I mean. I don't think this one needs much explanation. I mean, pretty much everyone knows about Morgana and his strict sleep schedule. Go the f*** to sleep. And who could forget about Ryuji's favorite two words? For real? It's for real! For real? 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 If you were to take a drink every time Ryuji says for real, I'm pretty sure you would die of alcohol poisoning. Throughout the game, Ryuji resorts to using the word ethan in substitution for, well, you know. Though through all the pain and suffering Ryuji went through, he finally got his hands on the F word pass. And he's finally able to say f Unfortunately though, it wasn't a voiced line. Some people say Persona 5 on PlayStation Portable is more likely than getting the Switch port, and to those people, I give you a cursed image of Persona 5 on a PlayStation Portable. This refers to the opening lines of Mass Destruction. Again, like with Last Surprise, people liked memeing this. Did you see that, Shinji? Like I said earlier, Persona 3 and Persona 3 FES do not allow you to control your party members. And it just so happens that Mitsuru just loves to spam Marin Karen. Marin Karen is a status ailment move that inflicts charm on the opponent. Now this wouldn't be so bad if Marin Karen actually worked. There's a video of Katsuya preaching about eating oranges in the shower. Apparently, this is something people do. So, someone made a video of Katsuya saying this just to poke fun at them. I'll leave a link in the description just in case you want to watch it. In Persona 3, if you get an all-out attack, a character voices one of their lines. Though, for whatever reason, it seems to prioritize Akihiko Sonata and his infamous line... I've been waiting for this! and I wouldn't have it any other way. I tried doing a little digging to see why this was, but I couldn't find anything. I guess it's just the game's way of hinting that Akihiko is quite literally the best character in Persona 3 and you can't convince me otherwise. During the final showdown with Nyx, Nyx continues saying this one line, The Arcana is the means by which all is revealed. Did you see that, Shinji? Naturally, if a certain line is repeated, it's bound to become a meme. In Persona 3, October 4th is the day when disaster struck. Shinjiro was murdered. 
But by who, you may ask? Some say Ken is the one to blame since his original intentions were to kill Shinjiro, and he's the one who brought him in the dark alleyway in the first place, but the one who truly did murder Shinji was none other than... Revolver Jesus. He's the only character in Persona 3 with a gun that actually works like a gun. Aside from Shuji Akutsuki, but who really cares about him? The fanbase dubbed him Revolver Jesus because, well, he looks like Jesus, and he has a gun. Mind-blowing, I know. Fun fact, if you search up Revolver Jesus, Takaya actually shows up. Oh yeah, I should probably mention Takaya's his real name. Others still debate that Ken was in fact the reason Shinji died though, and honestly they're not wrong. The way I see it, Ken just couldn't get the job done fast enough. His intentions were to murder Shinji. Revolver Jesus just beat him to it though. If Ken never brought him to the alleyway, Shinji would still be alive. Though he still would have ended up dying eventually due to his persona, but that's besides the point. And for that reason, Ken is one of the most controversial characters in Persona. You love him, or you hate him. This refers to the immense amount of people claiming they look like Joker from Persona 5. Each time I hear this, I just cringe. In the end of the answer in Persona 3 FES, it's revealed that the Persona 3 protagonist has been turned into a door. That door is supposed to seal next away. This led to many people nicknaming him door -kun. He died for our sins and he shall not be forgotten. Or did he actually? Some fans believe that he didn't actually die, and that he's actually in a stasis-type state. Though if he ever does come back, you already know what that means. The Arcana is the means Who actually is the mascot for Persona 3? Our two candidates are Aegis and Koromaru. Aegis is the mascot for Persona 3 Dancing in Moonlight, so you would think she's the mascot, right? I mean, Morgana and Teddy represent their dancing games, so you would think so. According to Atlas, though, the mascot trio is Teddy, Morgana, and Koromaru. I think they only did this because they're all little animal creatures, and Aegis would look pretty weird next to them, so I still firmly believe that Aegis is in fact the mascot. I mean, just think about it. Teddy and Morgana had some pretty big roles in their games. But what did Koromaru do? He's essentially just Ken's pet. But Aegis? Aegis plays a huge part in the Persona 3 lore. In Persona 5 Royal, the true ending reveals that Akechi is still alive. I didn't think Atlas would go as far as to retcon Akechi's death, but, you know, they do what they please. Let's be honest, they just want him in spin-offs. Looking cool, Joker refers to a line spoken by Morgana. A lot of its popularity came from Smash Bros. Ultimate, since, well, it's one of his taunts. In the FEMC route of Persona 3 Portable, it's actually possible to save Shinjiro. If you max out the Moon Arcana with him, then he actually just ends up in a coma. Now that I think about it, I guess it's no surprise that they retconned Akechi's death. Fans argue as to whether or not the FEMC is canon. Atlas has confirmed, though, that all the Persona games are in fact canon, along with the spin-offs. Their reasoning is that many different alternate universes exist. And I guess the FEMC is just one of them. People love Adachi from Persona 4. We can all relate to Adachi to some degree. He just goes to show that anyone can become a criminal if they aren't careful enough. Haru's screen time is honestly quite disappointing. You would think being one of the Phantom Thieves would give you a lot of screen time, but I guess not. The Snow Queen quest was meant to be an alternate route for Persona 1, but it was removed from localization for whatever reason. Some people claim that Persona 5 Royal is actually the finished game, and not an improvement. This was because Persona 5 had some leftover files that were later used in Persona 5 Royal. This claim is ridiculous, though. Persona 5 felt just fine. It didn't need the enhanced version treatment, but it got it anyway. And of course they're gonna expand upon unfinished ideas. That's what an enhanced version should be. There is a ton of symbolism in Persona, and honestly, I could make an entire video discussing it. A good example of this is the summoning methods used throughout the games. Evokers are traumatizing and tiring to use as it resembles the act of committing suicide. This represents C's willingness to face death itself. Tarot cards are used to read someone's fortune, so by crushing them, it's essentially denying these provisions and making a path to your own fate. Society forces people to wear metaphorical masks to protect their inner vulnerabilities, and the Phantom Thieves literally rip off that mask and confront their inner selves to have the strength to rebel against society and fight for what they believe in. The Velvet Rooms throughout the Persona games also have some hidden meanings. Except the first two, they're quite literally just Velvet Rooms. 
The Velvet Room in Persona 3 is an elevator, which is meant to symbolize C's ascending through Tartarus. Right before the main character has his final showdown with Nyx, the elevator doors fly open, thus meeting his final destination, death. The Velvet Room in Persona 4 is a limo, driving through the fog without a clear destination. It's a clear parallel to Persona 4's story. And finally, Persona 5's Velvet Room is a prison cell. This symbolizes how society views the protagonist as a good-for-nothing criminal who needs to be punished. Originally in Persona 4, Yosuke was going to be a romance option. The reason we know this is cut voice lines that are still in the game. I like you. Though it is unknown why it was cut in the first place. Persona 5's original concept is pretty different from what it is now. Originally, it was supposed to be a story about backpacking across the world, and the original theme was supposed to be one of self-discovery. Even the Phantom Thieves weren't even a thing yet. Persona 3's beta is pretty interesting. There's tons of concept art out there. Some characters look pretty different, and others look relatively the same. There's also some early gameplay footage, also early versions of songs, etc. I won't dive too deep into it because there's a lot to cover, but I may make a video on it in the future. There's a beta version of Last Surprise used in pre-release trailers. Now, that in itself is pretty cool. But, strangely enough, Persona Q2 uses the beta version of Last Surprise, albeit it's brief, but it does use it. Hidden in Smash Bros. Ultimate's files are two songs, those two songs being the original versions of Beneath the Mask and Area of the Soul. They were both remixed to be faster paced, but it's still pretty weird to see them in the game files. What strikes me as a bit strange though is that Lost in Thoughts All Alone is still in the Smash Bros. Ultimate release, despite not exactly being an uplifting song to fight to. Granted, there is a new remix of it, but it's still a bit strange nonetheless. If they can coexist, then why can't these? But I digress. In Persona 5, there are some unused beta models. Overall, they do look pretty weird, but the three that stand out the most are Morgana, Joker, and Sojiro. Morgana by far has to be the creepiest one. He looks like some kind of demon cat. Sojiro just kind of looks a bit older, and Joker just kind of looks more Catherine-y, if that makes sense. We'll get into that later. Doubt was a mechanic planned to be in Persona 5, but was cut out. Essentially, it could cause your confidants to reverse or just flat out break. This mechanic has been in previous Persona games, but was left out of 5. And honestly, I'm a bit glad, because that sounds like a lot of time management, and I'm not the greatest at that. Though it would have been pretty cool to see in harder difficulties. In Persona 5, pretty much every major character aside from Igor and the twins have two unused voice lines. Those two voice lines are all essentially versions of Let Me Explain and that's it. It's unknown what they would have been used for, though Sojiro does say one of the lines on Valentine's Day. Catherine's development started because it was meant to be a prototype of Persona 5, and you can certainly see that with the test models. The resemblance of Joker and Vincent is uncanny. It's no secret that Persona 3 and Persona 4 have the same engine, but what you may not know is that Persona 4 has a bunch of unused files from Persona 3. Persona 3's entire battle archive was put in Persona 4 as filler data to pad out the discs. The Tartar's speech icons were also put into the game, and strangely enough, a Yukari portrait with an oversaturated image of her blinking. But it only gets stranger from there. Persona 3 FES's entire original soundtrack was also on the disc, along with reincarnation remix of Deep Breath Deep Breath, and they even have the beta version of Burn My Dread along with the Persona 3 intro. In Persona 4 Arena, there are two unused audio files, one being Persona 5 Hero and the other being P5 Hero. So it's pretty clear that the protagonist for Persona 5 was supposed to be in Persona 4 Arena. Originally, a character named Hifumi Toga was meant to be a phantom thief. Keep in mind though, the Hifumi we see in-game was not the Hifumi that was meant to join the Phantom Thieves. They just had the design lying around and said, hey, we should use it. So they just used the scrap design for Hifumi Togo. So to recap, she's a new character, not the one who was planned to be a Phantom Thief. She just happens to use the same scrap design. There's evidence of Sai Nijima being a possible romance option, but it was cut for unknown reasons. One of Persona 5's scrapped concepts, though, was having Sai and Makoto living in the same apartment as the protagonist. Her role at that point in development would have been bigger, and it would have been easier to tell a somewhat believable story between her and Joker, since the final release only has the interactions they have in her confidant being interrogation. 
An unused model of a mouse form for Akechi can be found in Persona 5, complete with animations. The thing is, the only things capable of inflicting the rattled status are the Ma enemies in Futaba's palace and the statue puzzles in Shido's palace. Akechi doesn't join the thieves until long after Futaba's palace is completed, and he leaves before entering Shido's palace, making this model pretty pointless. If you don't know, Kanji, Ryuji, and Futaba all have dyed hair. Kanji and Ryuji dyed their hair blonde as an act of rebelling, however, Futaba is a special case. A character designer wanted to make her stand out, and so her hair was made a bright orange, because depicting a sad and suicidal character with black and emo clothes is a bit cliché. Originally, Akechi was supposed to have a palace of his own. He would have been referred to as Master Akechi or Lord Akechi. It would have taken place between Sai's palace and Chido's palace. Honestly, it would have been really cool to see, but unfortunately, it was cut out of the game. Instead of being DLC, Akechi was supposed to be on the base game for Persona 5 Dancing. Evidence to support this are two placeholder images. It's a bit strange to have one of the Phantom Thieves, I guess temporarily, as a DLC character, but you know, whatever. An unaired episode of Persona 5 The Animation dropped in 2019. The episode was titled Proof of Justice. It's essentially now an Akechi OVA. I won't dive into it in case you want to watch it, and if you don't know where to watch it, trust me, you'll find it. The Aeon Arcana is pretty strange. It's only in Persona 3 FES and Persona 4 Golden, which are both re-releases, yet strangely enough Persona 5 Royal doesn't have it. Alright, whatever. The Aeon Arcana is not part of the base tarot card set, and from what we've seen, it's given to a character trying to understand the world around them and themselves, those two characters being Aegis and Marie. For some odd reason, the PSP release of Persona 2 Eternal Punishment was never localized in America. <laughs> Atlas, Atlas, Atlas. Why? Koromaru appears to be based off of Hachiko, a famous dog of Akita breed in Japan. Hachiko saw his owner Yuno leave for work every day, and he would wait for him at the train station until the evening. Hachiko continued to do this for nine years after Yuno passed away. Koromaru does something similar, where he waits at the shrine for his owner, who has unfortunately passed away. Morgana's cat bus form is a Citroen H-Van. Not sure why it was necessary to specify, but whatever. Apparently, even Shujin Hai's logo was inspired by the van. There's an unused voice line of Joker saying, Now that's comedy, in Persona 5. <laughs> now that's comedy! <laughs> the way he says it is a bit unsettling, and it's unknown what it's used for. Persona 2's last battalion was censored in the PSP version due to new laws that had been introduced in Japan between the game's original release and the PSP release. These laws prevented the use of real people in fiction. Hitler's name was changed to Führer and he was given shades and a coat to cover his uniform. English releases of the Persona 3 manga is hard to find now. It's mostly due to the fact that it's out of print now. A lot of people have trouble finding all the chapters, so if you own all of them, congrats. In South Korea, Ryuji's shoes sparked a bit of controversy. The reason being, the Japanese imperial flag is on Ryuji's shoes, and due to... historical reasons, they don't like that. In Eternal Punishment, Tatsuya was supposed to keep his school uniform instead of his tracksuit. That's it. The Persona franchise is set in an alternate timeline where the events of the first SMT didn't happen. The games in this timeline are... Persona, obviously, SMT If, and the Devil Summoner franchise. Catherine, arguably. Vincent does make an appearance in Club Escapade, but that may just be a cameo. Apparently, sex appeal was going to be a social stat in the game, and it would also have a use in battle, such as dressing strangely, or being able to confess your love. The ranks would go dauntless, bold, thoughtful, kill with eyes, and <coughs> dripping. In the original Persona 5, there's a scene where Ryuji gets harassed by two stereotypical gay men. In the Persona 5 Royal release, though, this scene was changed due to complaints. I can't really show the scene without doing it justice since it's about two minutes long, so I'll leave a link in the description if you want to watch. If you ever wondered who's playing the music in the Velvet Room, those two titles would go to Nameless and Belladonna, respectively. They both only make a physical appearance in Persona 2, though. Maya's apartment in Persona 2 is really dirty, and it's actually possible to beat the game without ever needing to enter there. Persona Trinity Souls a spin-off anime of Persona 3, and it takes place 10 years after. Up until this point, I've never heard of this thing. Even Akihiko makes an appearance. 
In Persona 5, there's an unused Persona named P6 Unused. I don't think it's hard to know what it's supposed to be. The real question is when are we getting Persona 6? Loki's design changes in almost every Persona and SMT game. He doesn't seem to have a mouth in Persona 5 though. Apparently there's a story that Loki made a bet with a dwarf. He lost and he had to give up his head. He was cool with that though, but he didn't want them taking any part of his neck. Neither side could agree what part was neck and what part wasn't. So ultimately, Loki kept his head, but his mouth was stitched together as punishment. Okay, first of all, what the f- This is a password you need to unlock the Persona Haster in Eternal Punishment. This password isn't given anywhere in the game though. In Kamoshida's palace, there's an unused nude statue. I don't think I'm allowed to show that on YouTube, but it's not even that provocative. I'll censor out part of it with a cut Kamoshida poster. This is likely supposed to be depicting one of the volleyball team members. Revelations Persona is the westernized release of the first Persona game. Many different changes were made. Some characters' names and ethnicities were changed entirely. Most prominently is Masao. He was changed to be of African-American descent, and a little bit of his personality was changed as well. They even changed his name to Mark. In the files for Persona 5, there's an unused texture that has the McDonald's logo on it. It's pretty weird. It makes you think why it's in the game in the first place. In the Persona 3 song, When the Moon's Reaching Out Stars, the first opening line is, I've never felt like so miserable. Apparently some people feel creeped out by this song, as it has some pretty gloomy lyrics covered by upbeat music. It feels like as if it's a cry for help. And apparently people are also creeped out by the song Changing Seasons, mostly because of the French lyrics, and that's when the game starts to get darker. In Persona 5 Royal, a cut bad ending has been discovered by data miners, but something we have to take into consideration is how many cut endings have been in Persona games. There's no way Persona 5 Royal's the only one with one. A few years ago, a Persona 3 FES Nick skip was discovered. Or I should say rediscovered. Someone on a GameFAQs forum 12 years ago posted about this, and nobody rediscovered or noticed for 9 years. It's crazy because this saves so much time for speedruns, and it's really simple to do. All you gotta do is hang out with Shinaka on the last day before the last battle, and you're suddenly on 3-3. In Persona 5, there's an unfinished model of Joker in an electric chair. It's really eerie to see this. I'm not really sure what it could have been used for. Maxing out Adachi's social link in Persona 4 Golden gives you a choice to remove a crucial piece of evidence linking Adachi to the murders. Choosing to get rid of the evidence gives you the accomplice ending. This ending is pretty bizarre and creepy as you basically betray all of your friends for one person. An untextured character model can be found in Persona 5's files. The name for this model is Test underscore Size and she's roughly around the height of most of the characters. She was most likely used as a reference model for height. People getting stuck in Tartarus is something that happens occasionally. Fuka is one of the victims, along with many others, but imagine how horrifying that must be. Blood on the ground, shadows everywhere, the sky is green, that's not somewhere I would want to be. The Persona protagonists usually have the Fool Arcana as a reference to the journey of the Fool and the Tarot. At the end of the games, you usually end up receiving the World Arcana, which means the Fool's journey is now over. The Persona protagonists are all around 16 years old. Yet you're able to romance a bunch of adults, and for the most part, they don't seem to have any remorse. Miss Toriyumi, Kawakami, and Kamoshida are just a few examples of these people. Igor states that only those who have formed a contract can be guests in the Velvet Room. The Persona 3 contract says, I will take responsibility for my actions. It seems like an admission of free will, which ties into the concept of the wild card. Maybe something similar is occurring in each game. What if the protagonist knows that they are free, while other characters aren't fully aware of that and don't have a free will, which of course is pretty meta since they're NPCs, but they also tend to have a more set and passive role within the story compared to the protagonist. The Persona dancing games are in fact canon. They just play it off as, oh, it's just a dream. So basically, they don't remember what happened, only the Velvet Room attendants do. But at that point, does it even matter that it actually happened? Metis from the answer is a personification of Igus's inner thoughts, much like the shadows in Persona 4. However, she's a bit different from other shadows like in Persona 4's character shadows, because instead of simply being an aspect of human emotion, she's human emotion itself, explaining how she got her emotions in the first place, and allows her to have a persona. 
In Greek mythology, Metis is the mother of Athena. Athena is Aegis' evolved persona. Since persona is a manifestation of human emotion, you can say that Athena is born of Aegis' human emotion. In the answer, Metis is the emotion that Aegis has discarded. Therefore, it can be said that Athena is born of Metis, which suits the myth very well. This is backed up by the fact that when Aegis got her persona Athena, that's when she realized she had human emotion. Athena may be half artificial. Personas are supposed to be born of human emotions, but Palladion, Aegis' initial persona was artificially made. Once Aegis got her emotions, her persona evolves into Athena, but there's still a bit of artificialness. When Aegis discarded her emotions, it also discarded half of what Athena was made of. Maybe the reason it didn't become Palladian again is because there's still a bit of humanity left in her. And during the fight with Metis, Aegis' humanity disappeared. So that may be why Orpheus took its place. This is all just speculation though. There is no canon love interest for the persona protagonist, so it's up to the fanbase. Some fans think Adachi might break out and cause more trouble in the future, but it's unlikely as he's realized the weight of his actions. People point out that the Persona 3 protagonist and Naoto have some similarities. They both have blue hair, have bluish eyes, a light skin tone, and they both have guns. But the similarities only seem to be visual. People seem to also think that Naoto is related to Raido Kuzunoa, reason being they look somewhat similar, and they come from detective agencies. This is a pretty baseless theory though, there's not a lot of evidence to support it. So since SMT IF is canon to the Persona series, maybe they'll remake it as Persona Zero. This is highly unlikely, but it's still fun to think about. A Persona 4 anime already exists, so it's pretty weird to have a Persona 4 Golden version of the anime, unless it's meant to be a New Game Plus iteration of it. They seem to go over things pretty fast, and it's only 12 episodes long, and some of Yu's dialogue can only be said in New Game Plus. Persona seems to draw a bit of inspiration from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Personas are already pretty similar to Stan's, but besides that, there's plot similarities. Persona 2 involves Nazis, aka the Last Battalion, just like Battle Tendency. Persona 3 has a group of people with supernatural powers related to the tarot cards, including a dog, similar to Stardust Crusaders. Persona 4 and Jojo Part 4 are pretty similar plot-wise. Both take place in small towns and follow the story of a group of high school kids trying to solve a serial killer mystery using the manifestation of their souls. Keep in mind, I don't actually watch Jojo myself, I'm just the messenger boy. So if you have any questions, uh, don't ask me. Nanako and Konami pair up for a performance and do surprisingly well. Maybe Nanako will follow in Rize and Konami's footsteps and become an idol herself. Only time will tell. Futaba's mother Wakaba died from a mental shutdown caused by Akechi, which means one of two things. Either she had a palace and Akechi killed her shadow there, or Akechi tracked her down in mementos and killed her shadow. If you've played Persona 3, you may have seen the Wild Duck Burger mascot. But, did you notice anything strange about him? When you rank up a social link, the world around you freezes. But the Wild Duck Burger mascot transcends time and space. And for that reason, I dub him the Duck God. Haru's recovery speed is insane, and I'm not talking about in battle. She essentially gets over her father's death in less than a week. Futaba mourned over her mother's death for way longer. On top of that, Haru has other things to worry about, like her forced marriage being caught as a phantom thief, and later working with the man who literally murdered her father. I guess screen time isn't the only thing Haru doesn't get enough of. Yen Press accidentally announced on Twitter that they'd be releasing an English translation of the Persona 5 Mementos Mission manga. But the thing is, Yen doesn't actually have the rights to any Persona 5 material. Viz Media does. Yen Press realized that and they corrected their mistake. They have no plans to translate Persona 5 Mementos Mission and neither does Viz Media. The real question is why did Yen Press tease something they weren't even gonna sell? Did they have to cancel plans or did they just really make a bad mistake? Shido knew Wakaba during her cognitive research, so it wouldn't be too far-fetched. I mean, it's pretty clear Shido isn't exactly above sexual assault, nor is he above discarding children. Wakaba had a thing for Sojiro, and probably before she even had Futaba. Sojiro says she never mentioned the father, she just had Futaba one day, pretty much out of nowhere. Both her and Akechi have the blood type of AB negative. It's not confirmed, but the likely answer is that Shido forced himself on Wakaba, and she decided to keep the child. Atlas has gone on record on saying that Persona 5 Scramble is a sequel to Persona 5 and not Persona 5 Royal. So does this mean that there's now a Persona 5 split timeline? One that follows the Scramble timeline, and another that follows the third semester Royal timeline. 
If you still don't believe Devil Summoner is canon to Persona, then this is your solid evidence. Daisuke Todoroki from Persona 2 is literally possessed by Kyoji Kuzunoa, a character from, you guessed it, the Devil Summoner series. Dojima's original design was changed because he, quote, looked like someone who would be chased by the police rather than a member of the police. On that note, Adachi's design was also changed when it was decided he wouldn't just be a red herring and be the actual killer, since the original design looked a little too suspicious. While Devil Survivor doesn't exactly have a school, Devil Survivor is very similar to Persona with its character archetypes and time management mechanics. It's the perfect game for Persona fans that want to get into the proper Shin Megami Tensei series. Igor, along with the attendants, were created by Philemon, the true master of the Velvet Room. He made a bet with another powerful god just to see if it was possible for humans to overcome their limitations. Igor essentially assigns these attendants to people to better understand them. And if you don't know, Philemon is the butterfly that's infamous in the Persona series. You see this little thing everywhere. But it's strange, Philemon hasn't made an appearance in Persona 3, 4, or 5. I doubt they retconned him, but it is a bit concerning. A bunch of Persona fans on Twitter got mad. At what, you may be asking? Well, to be honest, it could be anything. But they were mad at Japan for ripping off Shibuya's crosswalk. I really hope this was meant to be ironic. There's absolutely no way someone out there genuinely believes that Japan ripped off Persona 5's location. But people seem to surprise me every day. I also remember an instance of Yonjin Jaya's locals getting mad at tourists. Yonjin Jaya is the place that LeBlanc is located in, and in case you haven't noticed, the streets are very narrow there. Basically, ever since Persona 5's release, Yonjin Jaya has been receiving a large amount of visitors wanting to see it, but with the streets so small, People taking pictures just get in the way of life. If you do get a chance to go, please don't be a burden to those people. Just just take a picture and leave. When Neo The World Ends With You was announced, Persona fans were riled up again. They claimed that Neo The World Ends With You was a Persona 5 ripoff. But they're nothing alike. I don't know what these people are doing, but they're not a good look for the Persona fanbase. Game Theory, aka MatPat, made a really bad Persona 4 theory. The theory revolves around Teddy being Yu's shadow. The theory is so bad that MatPat literally has to tell the audience to ignore any plot holes. That's not what I'm here to discuss, though. The only way MatPat could have made a theory that bad is if he didn't actually play Persona 4. And honestly, that doesn't seem that far-fetched. He doesn't really seem to like the Persona series, so I don't think he would want to play it, even for the sake of his theory. The Persona 3 Club Book explains that plumes of dusk are fragments of Nyx's body that were shed when Nyx fused with the moon. They are essentially physical shadows. Plumes of dusk are what allows Mitsuru's motorcycle, evokers, and anti-shadow suppression weapons to work during the dark hour. Anti-shadow suppression weapons are what Aegis, Labrys, and Metis are. Within their personality module, there are two plumes of dusk. That means that Nyx is a part of all of them, including the evokers and, I guess, the motorcycle. In the good ending for Catherine, Vincent and Catherine get together and have a family. Some people suspect the son to be Joker. I mean, there's some similarities. Other than just appearances though, there doesn't seem to be a lot of proof. Maybe Joker's mom really is Bayonetta. Thanatos has usually been depicted as having a purple aura around him. But in Persona 3, that was changed to blue. And he's been blue ever since. Why does it take so long for Akumura to die after Akechi kills his shadow? It can take as long as up to two weeks, if you're quick enough. So how could Akechi know that he would die before revealing his identity? As an assassination method, it seems a little too risky. The way it's worked up until that point is the target suffers a mental shutdown as soon as the shadow is killed, which is why the principal died just before going to the police and the train conductor, etc. The way Akumura dies implies that you have to kill the shadow, let some time pass, and then they have a mental shutdown. But Akechi can't plan anything ahead with this knowledge. The timing of all the deaths have been precise. Even if Akechi knows how long it will take for a mental shutdown to trigger, he doesn't know when the Phantom Thieves are going to trigger that change of heart. So shouldn't the scene with Akechi killing a shadow have happened during the press conference? In Persona 5, there's many different bad endings you can receive if you don't complete a palace within its deadline. Kamoshida gets the students to call the cops on the main character, and Ryuji is presumably expelled. Then An is left with no one to protect her from Kamoshida's advances. Harame continues to take advantage of Yusuke, and presumably will suffer the same fate as all of his other pupils. Kanashiro forces Makoto to get into illegal services, and is found heavily drugged by the police in one of the illegal service shops. 
Futaba commits suicide and her remaining relatives blame the main character for her death. Haru gets forced into a marriage that is guaranteed to be abusive both emotionally and physically. And by far the weirdest, Akechi still shows up with the police to take you into custody, even if he already died, which is really weird. Adachi has two key items. You can max out his social link in the true ending or max it out in the hunger arcana during the bad ending. In the bad ending, Adachi's cell phone number is the key item. The main character seems pretty scared as he sees Adachi through the window on the train. Adachi says he shouldn't bother trying to delete the phone number because he would always catch up to the main protagonist. This could be a double meaning, as Adachi may not just be talking about the main character, but the player as well, as the key item serves as proof that you destroyed this town this world, and your bonds. Dachi's motive over keeping a tab on the main character is to force him to carry a reminder of what he did. The player will be forced to carry his phone number throughout the new game plus. Adachi knows what you did, and you are forever tainted because of it. This is more of an idea rather than a concrete theory, but if Inaba actually does turn out to be a simulated reality, that's incredibly creepy. Persona H is an adult Flash game featuring, well, you guessed it, Persona characters. And I figured I might as well get this one out of the way as well. This Futaba image is from a Persona 5 adult animation. The quote-unquote accident that killed the main character's parents, as well as Yukari's father, and caused Aigis to steal Ryoji inside the protag might have been deliberately caused by Yakutsuki. So I really don't doubt that this was the start of his plan. It's the one event that sets off Persona 3's entire story, after all. This is the idea that the developers are actually satanic. They created Shin Megami Tensei to promote satanism. Obviously, not true, but it's pretty creepy nonetheless. Have you ever felt an eerie sensation while playing Persona? Then maybe it's because the game is more than just a game. When you summon a Persona, it's also being summoned in the real world. The developers are using you to help summon demons as an effort to promote satanism. Again, quite obviously not true. At the end of Innocent Sin, it is revealed that the story of Jesus dying by being stabbed was a part of a rumor that Nyarlathotep had spread. And bouncing off that fact, it's fair to assume that Christianity is actually a rumor created by them as well. And if that's also true, then he also had to create God. New playthroughs are referred to as cycles. That's such an odd thing to call them but maybe there is some truth to it. Are our main characters stuck in an infinite loop forever repeating their destiny? This video literally took a month to make. I spent that time editing, researching, script writing, the usual stuff. So my pain and suffering is finally over, so I really do hope you enjoyed the video. Sorry if some topics didn't make a lot of sense. I wanted to at least shed some light on those topics and I tried my best to fill in the gaps, but my knowledge can only go so far. And that's where you all come in. If I missed anything you think is iceberg worthy, leave a comment. I'll try my best and respond to all of you, but I can't keep any promises. Again, I'd like to thank you all for watching. I opened up my new Discord server, so if you haven't joined, go ahead. And I strongly encourage you all to subscribe if you want some more content like this. Until the next video, see ya.